ladies and gentlemen of all ages, boys and girls, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Angry Meat Production. We appreciate you coming in and letting us be a part of your lives week in and week out. We hope to do our best to present you with something that your eardrums delight in. Whether you're looking at us on YouTube or Rumble, or listening to us on Spotify, Google, or Anchor, or any of the other podcast services that we are currently on or trying to get on, we thank you. And if you don't mind, at the end of every episode, stop by, leave us a comment, leave us a like. If it asks for five stars, we'll take five stars, even if you don't like us. Five stars are what it's all about. With that being said, we hope you enjoy our attempt to make our advocation our vocation. Ladies and gentlemen, let the games begin. Welcome, Angry Faithful, on episode 95 of Nerd Sports. We're going to go in deep in the super secret uh, sport of bar golf. Bar golf, basically, you take shots, you know, if you take you know, a shot of tequila, it's a, a hole in one. If you take, you know, a beer, it's, you know, a par five. So, no, it's, it's how many drinks it takes to, to finish that particular drink. So, if you have like a, a par one, would be one shot. Yeah. And then you have like a pint beer, would be, say, a par four, par five. Okay. And well, then your, and then your goal is to finish the game with the lowest score. Like his hook line, his, his intro is, we're going to go in deep. It's like, okay. Well, as deep as he can. You know. Bless his heart. He does his best. Hey. Inches you know, are inches. When I think about David doing carnal things, I I, re <laughs> I, I remember that scene from Don't Mess with Zohan. <laughs> you know, when he's talking about it, it's not really that big. It's all the hair. It's about how you push. Um. It's we're just it gonna is. gloss over the whole you thinking about David doing carnal things. We're just glossing that over. You have like a camera or something like that, where you like, I mean, it would be a disappointing camera because you're just gonna see me masturbate all the fucking time. But <laughs> you know, your your hopes and dreams of seeing another world. No, no, you're practicing. I, I, see, I, I practicing. see David posting on like the T flop subreddit or something. <laughs> Or or that one phone that one photo. You have an OnlyFans. You just don't know it. That's how you can afford your. That's how I mean, you can afford your, your YouTube red. <laughs> how do you think I paid for this backdrop? Thank you. I don't know. I do not know, Johnny. Not at all. I had no idea what you did. <laughs> or 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 that one. Uh, meme i sent to everybody the ones like victoria's secret just uh hired a uh what was it fuck i'm ruining this whole thing oh, it was, wasn't it their their first downs uh, yeah a per, uh, person with down syndrome for yeah victoria's secret. I, I replied with that is this anything to do with eof and then i saw that david had looked at it but it, there was a there was a time gap there before he started typing yeah, and I was like, "That's equal opportunity fapping for you, David." Well, I found I found an even better one. That was, that was what what was the even better one? That was what what was really funny is, is I found an uh, educational uh, opportunity fund. So it kind of kind of melds in there, you know. David has very uh, progressive genitals. They do not discriminate. No, no, no. Okay. Sign up before we get into the uh, uh, whole sports stuff and everything. I was talking to a buddy of mine when I was uh, working at a, a door and window place. And we were having this discussion of if it's like deplorable to have sex with a uh, mentally challenged person. And he goes up, he was like, you know what? When I was in school, we had this mentally challenged person. And all she could do is like, nah, nah, nah. That that was her that was her uh, speech. Well, apparent because of the small town and everything, one of the uh, guys ended up having uh, intercourse with her and impregnating her. 
Well, they didn't find this out for like years down the road. And they seen her like uh, with a kid in the local uh, Walmart. And she had like perfect grammar. <laughs> and she <laughs> she she could she she carried on a sentence and carried on a conversation and everything. They're like, so basically all she needed to do is to get laid to fix that shit. It was it was the weirdest shit I have ever heard. I was like. I, I I don't because now now uh, well you know how Kai is. You I take something that like that. Pen, after Woody huh? Harold sleeps with his landlord landlady, <laughs> he wakes up and it's those spider veins and she's sitting on the toilet and she goes I don't know what it is, but there's just something about good sex that knocks something loose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. well well, I tell the story to Kai as we're going up uh we're going up to the uh uh farmers market and this manly handicap walks by us is like Dave Dave here's your chance to do something good for the world. <laughs> and I was like Jesus fucking Christ Kai. It's it's not good. So what you're saying is it's a public service. Basically. Or whereas David is concerned, it's a crime against humanity. It, I, I don't know. It, it just feels wrong <laughs> to do that. I'm sorry. It's just because that's <laughs> where you draw the line. I fucking, yes, that's where I fucking <laughs> draw the goddamn fucking now, line. Now Dude. we're starting to put limits on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a, a deviation from the normal programming. I know that we do joke time with Colin towards the end of the night, but it is late. It's a little bit after nine, and he's got school tomorrow. So, with that being said, let's try to get the guy. Okay, while he's getting him up, my thinking is this because the person has like a childlike mind, it, to me, it's pedophilia. You're not wrong. I'm going to stop you right there, Dave. Okay, there are there are hundreds of Democrats and and celebrities who are not being prosecuted for the same crime that you're talking about committing. <laughs> True, it's not wrong. Okay, how's it going today, Colin? I'm confused about that question that you just started. Okay, so. <laughs> David, led the show off talking about sex with mentally challenged individuals and how there was a small town and the one of the guys slept with a local retard retarded girl and got her pregnant nobody knew about it and a few years later she's got a kid and now all of a sudden she speaks normal full sentences and enunciates all of her words and so basically david took himself out of the story made him a girl what no i wouldn't knock your mouth all right that no no uh, it, it we felt it felt like it was the for sure mountain, so i mean I, it was I, one of those i have a friend that just happened to kind of thing yeah yeah right okay Colin, you ready to go, bud? Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, I don't know what's going on here. <sighs> I think it's the first time I've seen you wear purple. No. No. I like my shirt, whatever. No, I so I think it's the first time I've seen you wear purple. It's the second time. Anyways. Back up. <sighs> so... From the darkness, whole street. Hey, Hold on. Comes the hero that we don't need, but it's the hero that we deserve. Here for your enjoyment. Here to enlighten you, to broaden your horizons, to test the depths of your depraved humanity and humor. It is my offspring, my genetic code. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, angry faithful, it is that time once again I bring you Joe Cobb. 
the current. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, so JD. Go? Yeah, yes. you can go. I said your time with Colin. That's that's your cue. If you are white meat, why is Jeffrey Dahmer white? Oh shit. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> oh, oh shit. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I think we have a new. Uh... <laughs> Actually, I, went, I, went... I wasn't ready for the assignment on the first joke. I was not ready at all. Is Jake studying? Yeah, he is. He is. Oh. Okay. Wow. I want you to tell him this joke. Okay. Yeah, but well, well. Okay. <laughs> go, all right, go for it. What's the difference between kids and cars? You can't fit 20 cars in a basement. Oh, God. oh. <laughs> holy crap, that was good. Sweating over here. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. oh, you got this week, bud? What's a Mexican's favorite sport? Oh, no. Oh, no. All right. The views and humor reflected in this joke by the Colin segment do not directly reflect the views or opinions of Angry Me Production. Yeah. This, this, I'm not that person. Anyways. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear it. All right, Colin. Um, oh. I can't believe I'm about to say this. Start the joke again. What's a Mex? What's a Mexican's favorite sport? Cross country. <laughs> oh. oh my god! Okay, so being that this is recorded for posterity, oh. um, I gotta put my dad hat on for a second, Colin. <laughs> Ethnic jokes are not cool. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ooh. Oh boy. Okay. Well, I'm gonna let you uh, finish getting wound down for the night. Love you, bud. Uh, give brother a hug for me. I'll call you guys what later. Okay. Okay. All right. And, and, hmm. and just like that, everybody, Colin has climbed back on his steed, strapped into his rocket, and has flown back off into the darkest, deepest reaches of the coldest space upon which, where he obtains jokes like the one he just told. It has been my pleasure, nay, it has been my honor to present to you, for your ear holes and eye holes, to feast upon, become soppy wet, and leave stains on the sheets. Joke time with Colin. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, 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 that was uh, later. That, that was an interesting one. <laughs> oh, that Jeffrey Dahmer joke fucked me Ooh. up. Yeah. 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 That uh, one's gonna be that one's gonna be hard to top. Yeah, I, I, dude, that was the best delivery that he's had of a joke yet. Too. Yes, it has been. Because he just he just right he on just the tip. Threw he it got out up on the top rope and just gave us the elbow. Dude. It was it was just an unzip and right it, it was it was the flying burrito. Is what he delivered tonight. Hundred percent. Oh, I'm no. impressed. I'm very impressed. <laughs> David, are you taking notes from any of these jokes to tell on stage during your bits? Actually, I stopped doing uh, open mics for a little bit. Only because, oh. well, 
we have to do the show on Monday and the Monday show for like next week can't do because I have to work. So I just, I might do a like Thursday stuff up at a, a different place. Okay. But it's just really strange when you go there and you you know, you're doing an open mic and you're not getting a goddamn fucking chuckle or anything. And they're all comedians. So they're all judging you on your, on your stuff. So you're not really getting, you know, you don't know what's going to hit and what's not going to hit. So you don't really know what jokes to actually use. So it's That's it's just one of those it's just one of those things like you that you would get a reaction with that Jeffrey Dahmer joke. Oh fuck oh. yeah, you would. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Get a reaction. Well, okay. The what best... that reaction will be may be up for grabs, but you'll get a reaction. What's really sad is the best open mic that I have and I do is up at work. I mean, you got 12 hours to spend. And you do like, like, like uh, just recently, uh, one of the one of the coworkers were complaining that, you know, we have a lot of work now. And I'm like, well, good, because that means we're still going to be employed. Exactly. And she was like, well, it's just going to be a hassle. I was like, listen, you know, for past two years, I was basically on that street corner, you know. Pouring myself out. And some of the people, it's not like glamour and everything like the Hollywood likes to make it where everybody's just pu uh, sexy, even though, you know, they're they're paying for it. There are a lot of people you just like throw up a little bit and they're getting the ashes washed on their fucking dick. That being said, you might want to just, you know, have a happy thought and just do your work. So. Yeah. All right, well, <clears throat> we're still a week away. <laughs> and, um, but. So what do, are we going to go to NASCAR or are we going to go to. Uh, and that's exactly where I'm going is uh, NAS, NASCAR is uh, is back, everybody. Um, they had the, uh, the, 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 the Bush clash at the LA Coliseum over the weekend. Uh, Martin Truex Jr. won that one, which is a vast turnaround from last season. He, um, he, uh, he he went the entire season without a victory, which is the first time that that's happened since he's, you know, been a driver. But uh, it's not so much the news from the clash itself as the news that uh, NASCAR has been making over the last couple of days. Well, um, no, Jimmy, there's actually some actual news news. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson is making a return to the Cup Series. He is a part owner. That's, that's no, not no, it. No, no, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Calm your tits. Temper thy bosoms, madam. No. Tapuna your tatas. No. Tapuna <laughs> your tatas. That's, I like that. All right. So, anyways, the seven time Cup Series champion, Jimmy Johnson, who retired a few years ago uh, to explore some uh, opportunities in IndyCar. Um, is now part owner with Richard Petty. And he's going to race at Daytona for the Daytona 500. He's also going to enter the Chicago street race. Um, we'll see how that pans itself out. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, that, that's an interesting, that's an interesting partnership that they've got going on there. Um, and then, you know, last season, the uh the the the, la the the last ditch move that heard around the world uh conducted by Ross Chastain where he you know took his steering wheel off the steering column and put an Xbox controller on there and acted like it was NASCAR heat 2005 um literally said Jesus the take the wheel yeah rode the wall um all the way around and put up a blistering lap to pass Denny Hamlin um, to uh, transfer into uh, the playoffs. Um, NASCAR has said that that move is now illegal. Um, what I'm interested to see is how are they going to know somebody's attempting to make that, you know, make that move because it tracks like Darlington. Um 
there's a term called the Darlington Stripe, and it's and it's it's been there since the track is open. Um, the Darlington Stripe comes from a car that goes up into the outside retaining wall and has a very distinctive stripe on the outside of the car. If you um, come out of Darlington and your car isn't marked up, did you even really race? Yeah, the same thing could be said for Bristol. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be slightly amused to see how NASCAR interprets that rule throughout the course of the year. Now, anybody who's ever watched NASCAR has understood that NASCAR and the word consistency really don't go hand in hand. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how they set the precedent, the you know, the precedent the first time that they have to enforce that new rule. Um, I, I just, you know, there's going to be some changes to this car. Uh, last year, this this particular car was the first year that the car was on the track. Um, and so 2022 was really more of a learning curve for everybody. Um, now that, I mean, I think that that's the biggest reason why we had 19 different winners throughout the course of the season, which tied an all-time record for the number of, uh, of uh, winners over the course of a single season. Um I mean, as far as what NASCAR had set out for this car to do, which was to bring a lot of parity uh, to the sport between the teams that uh, have and the teams that have not. Um, I mean, for example, Trackhouse Racing, uh, owned by Justin Marks, uh, he, he he owns uh, Ross Chastain's car. Uh, I think it was Daniel, Su uh, Daniel Suarez's car. Um, and... and you know, I mean, they were a first year team, basically, and they they lit the world on fire last year and um, even put Ross Chastain in the championship four, um, which n nobody really saw coming. Um, you know, then, and then, I mean, you started to see kind of like what what more or less became kind of a predictable fall off for Joe Gibbs racing out of the Toyota camps. Uh, Toyota is talking about this year, they're going to try to lure some more teams over to the Toyota side. Um, it, I mean, don't get me wrong. Toyota puts, I mean, they, they've got a pretty good cup program. They got a really, you know, a pretty decent, uh, Xfinity series program. Um, you know, the thing about TRD, which is Toyota racing development, um, they produce all the engines that the Toyota team, uh, Toyota teams use. So if you if you run a Toyota in either you know any of the three series the the trucks the Xfinity or the Cup, you get your engines from TRD. Um, any of the R and D development things like that, as far as like uh, the car uh, goes or the trucks go, I mean all of that stuff's coming out of Toyota um, as a manufacturer itself. Um, and I mean I I I kind of like that that model. Uh, I think that it streamlines the costs a little bit for the for the teams that that use that that manufacturer badge, but um, you know over the over, over the off season, uh, NASCAR was trying to work a deal to bring Dodge back into the sport. And yeah, but um, Dodge is going on a total different. It, it's weird because they just announced uh, a couple of days ago that uh, huh. like the Dodge Challenger, the Dodge. Uh, uh, Fucking hell. Dodge Challenger and the Dodge, the other one with the C. Charger. 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 They're going to EV. 26% APR. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Is fucking they, are not gonna, they are not going to manufacture either of those anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, the privates all over the world are screaming. In, in well, they stopped yeah. making them for a while, anyways. Well, when they brought them back, when they brought back the Charger. I mean, they brought it back as a family car. Yeah. And then they, they kept, brought it, back as a they they kept it as a four-door sedan, but they put a Hellcat engine in it. You well, know, and, and No, they put to, a Hemi. They just put a Hemi. It wasn't a Hellcat engine. There's a Hellcat. Is it? There's, yeah, there's a Hellcat model. Oh. oh yeah. Um, in fact, Dodge, for both of those cars, has a red key program. You have to take a training course through a, a Dodge dealership in order to qualify or to be licensed by Dodge Chrysler 
to have a red key fob. What this does is it electronically advances the timing in the engine and it unlocks probably about, I, I think if I remember correctly, somewhere to the tune of an extra 100 or so horsepower. Jesus. Something like that. I would do yeah, it. So just know that if you go and you think you're spending out all this money to get that Hellcat and they hand you a black key fob, He's you're a basic bitch who got suckered. So, I mean, if you're going to spend that money, you might as well spend the check, you know, spend a little bit of extra money and take the training course and go get the red key. Now, I don't want to be responsible for paying your insurance, but hey, you do you. <laughs> no, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would keep the black fob and I will find a way to change it. And I, without I waiting that warranty, but hey, good luck. Yep. Uh, but there that's is like actually jail. other news. Like jailbreaking right <laughs> now. NASCAR was talking to Dodge, and the numbers were were. I mean, they weren't terribly far apart, but um, NASCAR started dictating to Dodge, um, "Hey, you're going to do this. You're going to do this. You're going to do this." And um, Dodge was like, "Now we're good." And then they walked away from the table. Mm. Um, and that, that had a lot of, you know, had a lot of people like really upset because, you know, you got Chevy, Ford and, and Toyota and NASCAR's, you know, NASCAR's kind of in a way really to a lot of fans has lost its way. Um, I mean, they're, they're branching it's out. Shell of its former self. Yeah. I mean, it, it really is. It's a shell of its former self. Um it's it's all about the TV ratings, which drive the sport, which brings in revenue. I get it, um, but um, they did, you know. It, it, and you know, when they introduced the stage racing, it, there wasn't. There's not a lot of fans of it. Uh, but NASCAR did announce this year that the road courses will not have stage breaks. That is correct. So, um, you know, that's going to make. You know, that's going to make for, uh, you know, for, for some interesting uh, scenarios come that first road race where, you know, the driver's expecting to see that that green and white checker that signifies the end of a normal stage. And then he takes his foot off the gas and loses a tons of, you know, a ton of positions. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens with it. Um, you know, I'm mean, Chris, if you're anything like me, I grew up watching NASCAR. Oh, hell yeah. You know, and, and, you know, it's, it's, I've yet to see this new car in person, but I mean, with some of the packages that they've, you know, brought to the track as far as aero is concerned, like the intermediate tracks, short tracks, it, it just, it looks boring. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even at the super speedway tracks like Talladega and Daytona, I, it, it's just everybody's just content to ride in line. And I don't know. I mean, I thought the NASCAR was hitting on something whenever they introduced those <clears throat> composite bodies for the Xfinity cars, you know, where they could bounce off the wall and they could take a couple of licks and, you know, they would, they would be good. See, it's, it's almost like they went, they went the way of, of, of the NFL. And I say that in that they, they talk about driver safety, which uh, I'm not knocking at all. Driver safety is, is paramount as long as as well as with player safety. But there is a a happy medium to get both. You get the excitement still without taking away the safety of of either of them. And it just feels like they've they've gone way too far. The pendulum has swung completely towards safety and has taken all the excitement out of it. Well, you know, they, they talk about driver safety and everything like that. And with concussion protocols coming to the forefront of the sport, you know, with the, those efforts being spearheaded by uh, people like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, I mean, Kurt Busch, he ended his career on, on, on terms that he wouldn't have normally agreed to because of concussions. Um hmm. Alex Bowman stepped out of the car for most of the season last year and missed the playoffs as a driver. He qualified for the playoffs by virtue of a win, but he didn't get to race in the playoffs 
because he had to step out of the car because he was suffering from concussion symptoms. And it right. seems like, you know, and, and you heard a lot of it from Kevin Harvick last year where, you know, which, which by the way, this is Kevin Harvick's swan song. This is his retirement season. This is his farewell tour this year. But, um, you know, it, it was just kind of, you know, they, they they talk about this car was supposed to be for cost savings. It was supposed to bring parity to the sport. It was supposed to be a safer car. Um, I've seen the underside of this car more than I, you know, more last season than I did the underside of a car, you know, underside of the cars for the two seasons prior. Um, the drivers are getting hurt in the cars. I mean, when when they're taking, I mean, they're they're hitting yeah. walls, getting getting. <laughs> well, those cars are, the cars are getting lighter and lighter too. Like I understand that they're getting you know more safety things in there too, but that like I said, they're getting lighter and lighter. And is this the same? Is you're this the same reason these. like with the uh, new football helmets from the NFL? Yeah, yeah. I mean, see, the thing about sports in, in general is that just like with everything else, it has a, it has a. Um, a progression, an evolution, if you will, where, you know, you can make materials lighter, you can make them stronger, but you're making, you know, like with the NFL, the players are getting faster, the players are getting stronger, and you're giving them lighter pads that can sustain more, you know, they, they can, you know, they have a, a, a sustainable shelf life. You're basically... turning the pads into a weapon yeah you know and i mean the impacts are getting harder and i don't know if it's because they're so focused on concussion protocols now uh especially with the nfl but it seemed like you you're you're starting to see more and more players being escorted into that blue tent on the sidelines during the course of a game um you know, you're seeing more and more drivers stepping out of the car, um, you know, with the introduction of the Hans device uh, after Dale Earnhardt Sr. passed away in 2001. Um, you know, it it really it it brought an end to things like the whiplash and the uh, the internal decapitations. Um, when you, you started introducing the, uh, the, the newer seat. You know that that eliminated a lot of that side to side and lateral movement. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as far as the drivers were concerned, and the only thing that I'll say about the car of tomorrow, or you know, you know the the COT. You remember the COT, Chris? They had that big mm -hmm. stupid wing on the back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the only thing that I liked, the, the the couple of things that I liked about that car was the splitter on the front. And the fact that they put those big foam cells on the side of the cage, uh, side right. of the roll. Now, they've thinned those down for this car. They've kept the splitter, but the splitter is now an integrated part of an overall shelf at the bottom of that car. I mean, because you remember when the car flipped over, it was solid, right? It looked right. like a right. um, Yeah, and and, you know, and then they started talking about fires breaking out in the car because where the brake ducts were you know for the for the air to come in and go through the uh, through the hoses to cool the brakes well right there on the grill there was an opening uh rubber debris from the tires was kicking off the track and getting trapped because there was a bar there right for, and it was building up there Dallas. yeah so the the rubber was getting trapped on the back side of that, and it was catching fire. Yep, and it was boiling the brake fluid in the lines and causing the brake calipers to explode. Yeah, we talked about that last season. How, how yeah, many we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, because these cars are able to go faster. I mean, yeah, yeah they're fuel injected as opposed to carbureted, so they don't have the need for a uh, 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 air intake pressure plate. You know, like they did with the carbureted engines, when right. they ways of dialing down the horsepower and everything like that to bring the speeds down. 
But with as aero dependent as these cars are, you're seeing more and more cars get together and they're, they're still getting north of 200 miles an hour. Um, you know, so it, the, the thing about, the thing about NASCAR trying to make these cars safer is that as vanilla as you may try to make the sport, you know, the product on the track, the guys are, that are in the shop and the guys that are behind the wheel, ultimately, at the end of the day, they are racers. And racers to a T are, um, you know, they are, they're going to look for everything that they can to make, you know, to make speed, to gain that advantage that is within the rules. Yeah. I mean, you right. remember. And even the, skirt right the, on the edge. It was the 90, I don't know if you remember this or not, but it was the 1998 um, All-Star Race. Mm-hmm. Jeff Gordon brought the T-Rex Jurassic Park car. Yes. Definitely. And he absolutely whipped the field, right? NASCAR took the car, tore it apart. Nothing broke the rules, but it pushed the envelope. Right. NASCAR came back to uh, Ray Evernham, who was his crew chief at the time, and said, we're not going to fine you for this car. Just don't fucking bring it back to the track. And the following week, everything that they had done to that car was now illegal. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, there's a lot of give and take, um, you know, Dale or uh, Daryl Waltrip, you know, he used to call it uh, ingenuity, you know, in, ingenuity, you know, and, and I mean, all, all, the, all, all the, all the legends of the sport back in the day, I mean, they, they were cheating. Well, it, well, look at at the the genesis of the of what NASCAR was. It was These guys were fucking moonshiners. Yeah, yeah. These were bootleggers. bootleggers. Like they, I mean, they awesome. thrived yeah. on. I mean, that's, their that's nose a photo water. of a, a rat racer from when they probably actually had moonshiners back in the day. Yeah. That was like souped up, which was a badass car. Yeah. And for, those, and for those of you who are listening, don't get moonshiners confused. With that beta bullshit reality TV show that <laughs> you know that they try to throw on TV, you know, you, I mean, you know, what what what's his uh, not popcorn? He was a legitimate moonshiner. Um, You're uh, talking about uh, oh god, there's there's tickle and Tim. Pickle, and, tickle. Well, Tim, yeah, tickle. Tim went Tim went went legit, and everybody hated it. Yeah, no, I'm talking about tickle. What tickle? Yeah, I'm like, dude. <laughs> You got that name from a trailer park. <laughs> he didn't get it in the trailer park. He, got that, he got that nickname in jail. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You are trying, are you trying to tell me that you got camera crews following you around to these stills and you're making them accomplices to a felony? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, then they have a camera crew that follows the cops around that are trying to catch them too. Yeah, and, and like mm. <laughs> chase cars and shit Some while they're while they're getting right on there. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you don't think that that producer's going, "Hey, man, Tickle's got himself a still out in the woods." You know what I mean? We'll, we'll we know the out. location and everything. <laughs> now, we got that shit plugged in with GPS. More I'll tell you, we get out there, and you know that there's some judge sitting back going. Man, I wish these dudes come in my courtroom. I'd issue subpoenas all left and right. Oh, right. <laughs> well, exactly. ass, you know, or you have a judge like, I'd let them go as long as they give me a couple of cases. You know, supposedly they did a behind the scenes one on the on on the show, and they were saying that because somebody had brought that up and asked them, and they're like, Well, you know, since we can't prove that what's coming out is actually alcohol, it could it could be water. You never know. It was like they're like, yeah, it's completely legal. We can't actually. So they're, they're taking mason jars full of water it. and going. Yeah, Dude, they're spitting it into the fire. Yeah. And it's going. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't prove it's moonshine. Okay, dude. But we actually have some uh, other news in NASCAR. NASCAR driver Kyle Busch arrested in Mexico in January for handgun uh, possession. This is actually... Uh, it was a snub nose 38 and he had hollow points in the cylinder and he was because him and his wife were on vacation um in cancun and he took the weapon with him for for, for family protection i don't blame the guy i was I gonna say i understand 
that you know different country different rules blah 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 aka q you know britney griner or um, um uh, brian griner i mean because face it britney's a dude I mean, come on. yeah that's... i mean just like michelle obama's michael obama i mean come on <laughs> I mean, when the first lady is packing a bigger package, bigger, you know, bigger bulge under her dress than he is in his tux. I mean, seriously. <laughs> or tell, me, tell me, oh, tell me, oh, Barack wasn't a power. He wasn't a bottom. I mean, come on. <laughs> I'm not even a power bottom with that. I mean, he and he, I mean, not a crisp he, bottom. Was no. He was a catcher all day. And she was, she, I mean, she was, she was the ace of the pitching staff. That's just all I'm going to she, she was the Nolan Ryan of that fucking bedroom. There's there's no I'm doubt about it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But uh, <laughs> I think. you never saw any photos of her pregnant, period. That's a good point. Just I, like, I like how we Johnny gets pissed off for us getting off topic, and he does it almost every time when we're talking like politics. Or I don't something. get pissed. See, when he does it, though, no, I don't see, want when, this. When, when we do it, it's tragic. Yeah. I want to unequivocally put to rest any any false information <laughs> that, that David Dickerman is trying to put out. You just uh, fake news us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he just fucking fake news us. What David is putting out is. Fake news. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am just as culpable. That's that's uh, just as re responsible in in layman's is, from you, David. Uh, just because you have to tell the squadron what the hell the words you're using doesn't mean you have to do that to me every squadron. time. Squadron? No, he's telling you. I know. I know what it means. Squadron. <laughs> I said platoon. Did I? No, no, you said squadron. Fucking hell. See, I can't yeah, fucking do anything right fucking now. Fucking spy dancers, man. I'm telling Why? You. Why do you have to be the odd one out all the fucking time? Uh, because I was uh, actually in, you know, a rep. You know, the only reason that we actually like to have you around, David, is because you're not the Coast Guard. See, at least you are a military branch. Like, I'll give you that. <laughs> sort of. Mostly. Kind of. Y'all still pissed off that any time I would go overseas to a TDY station, I would get, like, a swag bag. I'd get, like, a new Leatherman, new backpack, new camel pack. Every you know, fucking time. for people like you, David. They're called Fobbits. Yeah. You get all the high-speed gear because you want to look cool, but you're out there really sweating your ass off because you're wearing an extra 20 pounds. <laughs> That's why we make new ones. We don't want to fucking carry it. When, when he would go overseas, he would wear he would wear like the the shoulder armor. Get the fucking, what were the fucking pauldrons or whatever you call them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking back plates and all that shit. <laughs> one of those things is like, how can you look high speed without being high speed, everybody? Look, no, as a gunner, Not high like, speed when you're carrying all that plates. shit. Trust me. Fuck no. I, as a gunner, back plates are the shit. I'm just saying. Of course, I'm saying uh, I was mechanized, so I didn't have to carry any of that shit anyway. So, do you're like the my, my back plate was the entire fucking vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. You're good. Ting ting. <laughs> You hear that? No, neither do I. <clears throat> Mission first, safety always. Oh, uh, Eli, Eli was talking about <laughs> that. <laughs> Death before dismount. He was Eli was talking about that on Undescribe at one point in time that uh, because they got new uh, hearing protection, mm -hmm. and they were taking pop shots uh, at him, and he couldn't he couldn't fucking hear the gun <laughs> the stuff going, and someone had to like drag him down. He's like, "You're getting shot at, motherfucker." <laughs> Oh, hey. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, all right. At least, you know, this shit, it works. It's not like that 3M stuff. Yeah. Well, at least none of us, as a group, goes out to a range in full kit. I mean, anybody no. that does that is just a sad, sad individual. Right, Johnny? Mm -hmm. I never wore a helmet, so I don't know. What to Fuck you! Okay. Oh, oh, we're, I didn't wear a helmet. I wore. A, I wore. A no, you wore everything wore else, but oh, not you, my said, you said full kit. You so know what? I apologize. Full kit or 
you're not full kid. It's like being pregnant, David. You either are or you're not. It's like being screwed when you're retarded. You're either smart and coherent or you're um, poor scum. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll go with that. So you're you're a little bit happier with oh, that. Hey, you yes. know, so Chris, whatever makes clarify, you happy and less like – clarify, Chris. Like the, a bro. The, the, the incessant bro vet. dribble that's coming out of that hole under his nose connected to that lump three feet above his ass. I would wear a plate carrier with all my magazines to the fucking range because I got I didn't want to carry everything in a bag. Okay, see, this is the plate carrier though. Like there's that's what's wrong with carry it's a plate Dude, carrier. He had, he you had, still gotta be able to listen. You gotta it's it's train like you fight, fight like a train. Right? Yeah, he, he, yes. He I have had, I have two eye packs on there. So you're going to be. Uh, I'm he saying. had gloves on. He, 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 okay. It was basically, you know, we we took him for treatment and just brought him out without the fucking helmet. That's what happened. And I'm sitting yeah. over there. It's like, what are you, what are you doing? Dude? Have you have you not seen any of the 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 videos that our guys take when they're at the range? Yeah, I've seen a guy that had a, like a full like medieval type helmet shooting yeah, at the it's range. Cool if they do it. But when I do it, oh, it's just it's... sad and pathetic because you're not making any money off of it. Yet. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> Nobody signed up for this job because of the money, David. I know, it's right? Yeah. He's yeah. mad because it looks better. Unlike right? you, we weren't promised $5,000, a, a roll of fucking lifesavers, and a pat on the back, and, you know, some crushed Lucky Strike butts. I mean, seriously. Okay, yeah, I'm kind of upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys got paid? <laughs> Y'all got treated like shit? Y'all still doing this stuff? What the hell? <laughs> Let me put my pinky up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you only knew. Savages. <laughs> Go home, Joe Dirt. <laughs> hell, it's like uh, after... It was like after 9 11 when I got deployed. <laughs> There's people like sleeping up at the uh uh airport. And uh we were What's like so we we're, so we're just gonna stay up at the airport. No, we're gonna get a hotel. Why are they staying? It was like because they're probably army. We're gonna go get us a hotel. I used to have a uh in my room, Chris. I used to have this poster. And it was uh, it was an infantryman in a foxhole that was filling with water, and it says this sucks, right? Then you got a ranger who's you know, it, I mean the rain's coming in sideways, and he goes, I like the way this sucks. And then you got a green beret, you know that cool like recruitment poster <laughs> shot where all you see is the his eyes in the front sight post, and he goes, I wish yeah. More. <laughs> then you got an airman in a recliner whacking the remote on the on the arm. And there's white noise on the on the screen. He goes, "This sucks." <laughs> I haven't heard that joke. Get in a while. Cables out. That sucks. It, it was Didn't a poster. Know. They used to sell it at the Don F. Pratt Museum on uh, at, at Fort Campbell. Uh, I thought it was Private Murphy. Private Murphy did a comic about that too. Yeah. Yeah, he he drew that poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Good so time. are we going to get into uh, baseball news? Did they change some stuff? Oh, we had uh, one last uh, rule change on the NASCAR. Oh, okay. Go get was it. Was the, uh, the playoff change. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Go for it, yeah. That, so uh, they, they have taken away, basically, you do not have to be in the top 30 anymore in order to make the playoffs. But you will have to, uh, if you've won at least one race, you are automatically in as long as you have run the entire season or have an approved waiver. <sighs> and that's the, well, the top 30 for you know, the, not uh, I can blame Brian France for this one because he, he's not at the helm anymore. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't get that one. I'm going to be real honest with you. It, that doesn't make any sense to me. Well, there's going to be that's one of these everybody gets a trophy kind of feel to it. To be honest with you, yeah, there, there there's there's going to be some new rules for the upcoming baseball season. Um, oh, steadily. There's going to be a pitch timer. 
15. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, yeah, well, you know, kind of. Are they, way are they doing the same thing as the NFL? Is like for you know, it's not like well, a they, play per se. They started doing it in the uh, in the minors. Well, yeah, they started doing it in the minors. Now, the reason why they're trying to like do this, I think they're going to experiment with it in the spring, but um, you know, it's 15 seconds between pitches, or no more than 15 seconds in between pitches with the bases empty, and 20 seconds with runners on. Um, they're going to limit the amount of the shifts, which I like. No, they took defense. I, I also thought away. that the shift was stupid. Yeah. Um, but they also the the, the uh, pickoff. The bases are bigger. Yeah, the bases are bigger now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fifteen and, to eighteen inches. Yeah, and it reduces the distance between se- uh, first and second and uh, second to third by four and a half inches. Yeah. Well, that's uh, the distance between uh for you know between the corners and home plate is now down by um three inches and so I'm why like, don't they just give like uh participation trophies well rob man clown i mean manfred um he <laughs> is doing everything he can to destroy this game um I swear to God, he must have like dirt on every owner because they keep it. They keep voting to extend this ass. I mean, they keep voting. He he has to have something that yeah. basically yeah. sets yeah. up to where he he doesn't. It's, like the, running, it's like the running joke that Ronnie Brazier has not been designated for assignment because he has dirt on the owners. You know, and I'm like, uh, but. I mean, okay, so with the, the pitch timer, um, so what is it here? The pitch timer is the they're, – they're, they're trying to cut down the length of the games. And I'm like, everybody bitches about a baseball game taking three and a half, almost four hours. You go to an NFL game, and the regulation time is 60 minutes, and it takes three fucking hours to play. Yeah. But nobody bitches about football, you know. Um the length of the games will still be determined by innings and not minutes, but uh, to create a, a better, a, a faster pace, um, there'll be a 30 second timer in between batters and then a shorter time limit than between pitches. Uh, pitchers are going to be required, be required to begin their motion 15 seconds after receiving the ball with the bases empty or 20 seconds after receiving the ball with the runners on base. If they don't, they will be charged with an automatic ball. How the fuck is that? But the but the batters There's also these guys that sit there and they take their hats off, tuck their gloves up underneath their sleeves, and they're sitting there rubbing the ball, you know, and they're and they're just you know they're fiddling with everything, and you know they they they're sitting there just debating. Yeah, okay. That. You know, it, I'm just like, okay, look, you're not Gaylord Perry. Fucking throw the ball. I mean, I get it, you know. Um, but the batter also has to be in the box and attentive to the pitcher with eight second, at least eight seconds left on his clock, or he's yeah. charged with an automatic strike. Yeah. Now, pitchers are also going to be limited to two disengagements from the mound, so like pickoff attempts or step offs per plate appearance with a runner on first. The disengagements reset the clock. Mm. Okay. So I think that that's going to help base stealing numbers go up a little bit. Um, because if you're only going to be able to throw over once or twice per plate appearance, after that second step, that second disengagement, runner's going. Yeah, Absolutely. you have automatic green light right there. Yeah. So, um, shift restrictions. The defensive team must have a minimum of four players on the infield with at least two infielders completely on either side of second base. Um the uh the, these restrictions are intended to increase the batting average on balls in play and allow infielders to better showcase their athleticism with defensive plays so you know instead of having a second baseman way out playing like mid depth outfield and you know you've got the whole infield over on one side of the base or the other i mean it just I, I think what we're going to start seeing is we're going to start getting to an era when we're when we play more straight up, mm. you know. And and to me, that's that's more pure than, you know, 
uh, Joe Madden, uh, not John Madden, but Joe Madden. Um, he used to co he used to manage the the Rays, and then he went and won the World Series with the Cubs. But um, he loved defensive shifts when he was in Tampa Bay, and um, yeah, it just it it just it became a bigger and bigger problem. Um, I mean, I know that you're going to get those people that 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 are pro pro shift that are like, well, if a hitter is really a hitter, he's going to learn to hit the other way. Well, these are professional hitters, and they can hit to every part of the ballpark. They can spray the ball around, um, but you know when you know it, when it, it just and that's that's why like you remember last year or the year before it seemed like everybody was throwing a no hitter mm -hmm. and it was no, because it was, a lot of it was because of, a lot of it was because of the shifts yep you know so i'm i'm like all right i think what this is really starting to do is it's starting to reshift the emphasis back to pitcher versus hitter Yes. You know, and, and I'm for that. Now, um, with the bigger bases, uh, they've been expanded from 15 inches on each side to 18 inches. Home plate's going to stay the same um, because, let's face it, um, umpires like Angel Hernandez don't need any help with the strike zone. Um, <laughs> the primary reason why they're making the bases bigger is because of safety. Now, uh, what it does is it it gives runners and fielders more room to operate without colliding. So, I mean, it was that whole, you no, know, no contact, you know, and, and, you know, having to, because they, they first introduced like the neighborhood rule where you didn't necessarily have to make contact with second base. If you were a shortstop trying to make the throw down for a second, you know, for a, for a double play. And then they were like, no, you have to maintain contact on the bag. And then people started spiking other butt here, everybody, i.e. Manny Machado spiking Dustin Pedroia and basically ruining his career. Biggest douchebag in the world. I'm, I'm, I'll be happy if that guy never wins a World Series. That's all there is to it. Um, that's why in 2018, I loved it when Chris Sale struck him out to win the World Series for the Red Sox. I mean, he's such a douchebag that when he struck out, he even made a K with his body. So, I mean, just thought that was – anyway – um but it, it's it's going to help runners with the base stolen base attempts um you know in the quote unquote bang bang play where you know it's like you know you're trying to gun a runner down at first you know from deep in the hole down like short and third and i mean it's boom boom right so i mean it's it's going to it's going to help with that a lot you're not going to see so many of these slowed down frame by frame replays like they had in the um, ALCS when um, I think it was Jose Altuve beat out a pro <laughs> by a cunt hair, you know, so. Right. Yeah. No. Now they, they said that these, these rules are going to go into effect for spring training um, to provide an adjustment, you know, period. Uh, before opening day this year, uh, umpires have been instructed to begin calling violations with no grace period. So they're right out the bat, like call it as the standards laid out in the new rule book from day one of spring training going forward. Um, they're also going to be enforced during the postseason, um, but the new rules will not be used during the World Baseball Classic, which I think is nice. Um, I'm I, I, I'm not sold on the bigger bases. I'm, I'm not even sure I'm sold on the pitch timer. I mean, there are some pitchers out there that are just they just operate painfully slow, right? Um, but the shifts, <clears throat> the reduction of the shift limits, I I am I am all for that. I think you see a bigger. Uh... Uh, impact with the shift limits than the pitch timer. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I don't, and, you know, and I don't know that making the bases bigger by three inches is going to make much of a difference. I mean, I guess for comparison, we just need to find out where some of these women that David has dated and ask them if three inches is a big deal. It is a big deal. You need to shut the fuck up. 
Yeah, when you're missing that extra three, it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just it just means I have to do a little bit of extra than most people don't. I'm putting in more work than everybody else. So fuck off. He's getting a solid yard, three inches at a time. So fuck you. <laughs> yeah. God. Look, it's like having shorter legs. You just got to take more steps. Yeah, exactly. Move your legs a little faster. That's it. You're in the land of the little people now. <laughs> You know what's really uh, sad? Uh, I'm really uh, getting. Hello, uh, hello, the road. <laughs> you know what's really sad is I'm really getting into the slap. Remember fighting. the lollipop yelled. <laughs> I'm really getting into the slap fighting as an actual sport. Yeah, Dana White goes to a lot of those. Well, no, he I, owns, he doesn't yeah, go to no, a lot yeah, of them. He owns them now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, <laughs> he yeah. Fucking bought them. Hell, and hell. Uh, is, Black you're starting to coffee see. is uh, a sponsor. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. You're gonna see more and more guys walking around like Muhammad uh, Muhammad Ali before he died, and they're gonna be drooling all over themselves. And shaking. Oh no, it's already happening, dude. I'm watching this one. I'm watching this one, and we are back at the barrel. Oh, let me let me send this to you. Yeah, yeah. Because it's funny because. They, he's actually Dana has started bringing some of the UFC fighters in to do. Oh slap yeah, 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 yeah. These guys. Dude, there was and one. And they are just obliterating them. It's not even. It's not funny. even obliteration. It is literally <laughs> a like they can almost be charged with with assault there. Like it, it's so. You can literally. You can literally. You can hear the <laughs> Windows theme. Do 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 do. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it is. It is so. So hilarious! Look now, look at this this guy's uh, uh, left cheek, and you'll see that it's like. And this isn't the 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 big one that uh, I'll 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 find the big one. Oh yeah, this, the this barrel guy. with our featured fight of the evening. This is a ten round fight between Baby Ray and the Bayou Bastard. The Bayou Bastard is our super fan Ricky. His face. And he has won three yes. of his last four yes. fights. And has specifically requested a top ten opponent, so this is Ricky's opportunity, and he has won the coin toss, so he will slap first. Measure up on three, and here's one, two, three. Oh, Ricky with a gun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what yeah. I, what I, what I, they actually put in a. Like flipping a switch, man. Yeah. Ray, he's a little confused by what's happening here. <laughs> Under fucking statement of the century right there. Yeah, dude. And he doesn't even know what planet like, he's on. And tonight he's fighting the Bayou Bastard. And I can't he, help. He, he forgot his name and everything. Mm -hmm. his... Okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I found it. I found it. I found it. I found it. Let me send it. <laughs> fucking guy. <laughs> I'll send it to Chris so he knows what I'm talking about, too. I should just send it to the group. But no, dude, it's uh looking at their uh technique, like like the guy that you just saw, he goes a lot of them go like just straight out. He was going under and he was basically he was getting that whip action. Oh yeah, no, I saw that guy's face. Yeah. 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 Like these dudes are blowing out eardrums. Yeah, that, oh, well, yeah. that's the reason oh, why yeah. they put like cotton swab and shit in their ears so they don't do that. But yeah, they're blowing out eardrums, and it's literally a sport that anybody can play. I've seen some like fucked up matches to where the guy I looked at him was like, "Dude, you're gonna get knocked the fuck out." I mean, you seriously Dude. gonna get knocked the fuck out? Did you see the one with? And this was to be polite. They were the little people. They were. It was two midgets. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen the midgets. And, and he and he fucking the one dude swung and he hit, and the guy like just fucking ate it. He just and he just looked at it, and then he could just see the light die in his eyes. He's like, "Damn, man, I I just hit you as hard as I." And he you even see it in his face. He's like. Nothing, nothing, like, really. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, and then, it, yeah. It, and then the other dude just, oh, fucking. I like, I like, I like it the ones so where they get, they got, they got knocked the fuck out, 
so senseless. They just start doing like cartwheels and shit. <laughs> yes. It, it's, it, it's, I, I want to know. Wanna... I, I want to know what liquor the guys that, that decided they were sitting down one night. Dude, I used to do this as a kid when I was in oh. junior high. No, oh, no, fuck that. I mean, no, because this started out it's, as like a Russian thing. Like, you I was gonna say, it started pro. in Russia. So, yeah, they went pro, like, I mean, in Russia. was it like a Peter Eastman and or a Kevin <laughs> Eastman and Peter, Peter Layard, you know, kind of a thing? Or they were sitting around one night watching SpongeBob getting hammered, going, We can do better than that. <laughs> and they came up with the turtles. I mean, what, I mean, what well, okay. deal were they drinking when they decided, I got a great idea, we're gonna bring this to America? You know, I mean, okay, okay, okay. You know, you make fun of it as much as you want, but the you after watching like constantly, I start seeing like the 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 strategic of it. I mean, a lot of them like they'll dip their heads down. They'll they'll dip their heads down. I mean, they can't. They have to hold hold on something in the back so they can't like, you know, flinch or block or anything like that. But you you see like. Their their routine they they do the three setup and everything they make sure they they just get that jawline and, and sometimes they'll go up sometimes they'll just I haven't seen the smack down but I've seen like the side and the smack up I mean you get the smack you know, up you get like yesterday. a little bit of whip saw a video yesterday this guy he just needed a line of shot up and then he just. <laughs> Bam and knocked the dude out smooth. Yeah, like they had to catch him from back from you know, so he didn't bounce his head off the floor. I mean, like, and the guy's just like, I mean, completely out. I think it was an MMA fighter. And he's, it's, it's, Cause I've seen that one. What What kills me on this is that thirty second recovery time that they get. Yes, they just, they're, they're not covering around like seconds. they just landed a fucking bass and they're just flopping around the bottom of the boat. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, it's, it's, you think he's still like, bro, the, look at his eyes. There is nothing behind those eyes. And then he stands up. He like can't even stand up straight in the, in the square. And he's like, well, no, this is the cartwheel. Like, I, lo I love it. Yeah, watching. light him back up. He's good to go. He's, he's, he's in the circle. <laughs> like, I, I, mean, I, I mean, I'm seeing, I'm, he's I'm dead. seeing a he's couple literally of dead. This is weekend at Bernie's right now. Well, there, there is one that was. questions to know that I get a headache just watching that. Shit. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Dude, I've, see, I've seen them. I've seen them like prop them up, and as soon as they prop them up, they're like, <laughs> they're get, he's getting ready. I just, I was, I was like, they're getting them Dude, ready. He's getting ready. He's like, he's got his thirty seconds. He's just like, he's, and, and, and the, the, he's just like, Ooh. we just need somebody in the and back. It's the com and the commentators on there when he's when he's doing that is. <laughs> the commentator like, the dude's, the fuck up. dude's out, but he's so like, you think he's gonna, you know, he's 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 coming back around. You kind of seeing some light back in him. <laughs> I'm like, no, the fuck, fuck he said, there's no, no dude, you don't. <laughs> they stand him up, and the lights are still not on. <laughs> exactly. You know, I mean, at some point, we're gonna get some guy that he's gonna win like seven slap fight, you know, slap fighting championships. Oh yeah, and you know they're gonna. They call already him, have guys so, like that though. I think <laughs> it's gonna be the. Who who is the 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 boxer from uh, the Simpsons? What was his name? Tate something Tate. Yeah, they, yeah, that's <laughs> that's you're gonna see that in about two years. <laughs> I mean, to I me, slap fighting is is the more masculine version of curling. You I don't see, know, dude. I mean, I've seen them. Slap fighting is going to become an Olympic sport. And you're going to get these dudes in a bar somewhere in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, going, I could beat that guy. But yeah, there. yeah, that's that's one, I one thing that, that I, I really like about this is it, you could you could be like, you know, a bar guy. And you just go up and it's like bowling. We Come literally on. have a movie about this. <laughs> well, over the top? Basketball. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dude, yes. <laughs> I didn't. That is that is the most apt description that I have ever heard. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, in a world full of media, I mean, even a squirrel gets a nut every once in a while. Johnny got one. 
you know, mandatory fun day ribbons. <laughs> it's, 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 this is the basketball um, of of yeah, Olympics. Slap fighting championships is the basketball of MMA. Yes. <laughs> I just okay. I can't wait because I've already slogan. seen Ed, Eddie Eddie do it. The 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 world's strongest man. He's he's done a slap fight once. I want to see Thorson. I want I want. Oh. Yeah. Imagine, can you imagine the two of them going up against each other? Dude, I I want to see Game and Throws Part 2 with the mountain just... Ooh, and the head just explodes. But remember, Eddie beat the mountain. He beat him out in the strongman. Okay, yeah. But still, I still want to see can Game you imagine the two of them? I'm saying, Can you imagine the two of them fucking going up against each other? You know, I... Okay. Dude. Lord. Here's the thing. Here you got you got you got two the two rims alone are level two trauma plates. <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> I mean, you ain't wrong. That's that's for uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> could you could you wa- could you imagine the? Uh, God damn it! <laughs> I want to I want to see someone make a movie. A slap fighting, like over the top style. Yes, oh, yeah, oh, hundred percent. And just, just, I want it to be a montage of him. I want it to be, so him, like, it to be so hitting so like plates or some shit like that, dude. We we're, we're, we're we are writing this. Sylvester well, Stallone's gonna have a cameo, right? Like he's not in the slap fighting, but he's reprising his role and he's delivering the stage. Yes, absolutely. I, I want him. I want him to be the commentator. Commentator. I want. Yeah. I, okay. want I want. I want him. That's even better. <laughs> That's even better. And we got to have. You know. Well, we can't have him because Jerry the King Lawler is dead. Um, Jr. from WWE. Yes. Yes. It's a slobber knocker. Yeah. <laughs> Stop 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 He's He's got that cerebral palsy. Hey, I'm not making fun of the guy, but I'm just saying, Stone Cold. Oh, hundred percent. Oh God, that would be great. Uh, I think we made of everybody with any kind of disability on this one. <laughs> no, see, is there now, anybody that we left uh, now, out? Now we're gonna have like, a clip from me saying that, and Stone Cold's gonna stitch it on his TikTok page, and he's gonna be like, "You some bitch." I'd be like. I promised I wouldn't cry. <laughs> Don't call me some bitch. Me bitch. <laughs> he called me so bitch. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be on his uh uh it's gonna be on my headstone. <laughs> yeah, Stone Cold called like me some bitch. On, on, on repeat on his headstone. Some bitch. Or do that, you know the, the, the like sound wave tattoo that they have, but it'd be Stone Cold yes. voice saying <laughs> some bitch. There you yeah. go. That's your fucking tattoo right there. Some bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, what so we're gonna actually, a that's a really good this. idea. Like, I'm not going to lie. That's actually a great idea. That would be a good idea. Or, or it's a QR code, right? And yes. it takes you to a clip, a YouTube clip of him calling some bitch. There you go. Right? So now you've just made it a competition to see who could get Stone Cold to call them a some bitch first. <laughs> yes. Game on. Absolutely. <laughs> Game fucking on. Oh, crushed skull IPA tastes like Chris- warm. Yes. <laughs> Chris has got a, a, like a little bit of a leeway with us. Crushed oh, so. skull tastes. If if I had to class, oh, if you don't know the connections, I, I I got the connections, and I'll I'll make them. <laughs> you probably if I had better to classify what, all, what what kind of person drinks Crush Skull IPA. IPAs in general, those are for fucking. Uh, yeah, IPAs in general. I mean, it, it's it's for those, it's for those hipsters that weren't quite loved enough by their daddy, but loved a little bit too much by their mother, and in one bad day away from going full on cut myself emo. Yeah, because the real men actually uh, drink pats. Pawtucket pats? You betcha. 
Pawtucket Pats. <laughs> fucking hell. I can't get any kind of fucking leeway with you motherfuckers. <laughs> Blue oh, Ribbon fucking It's amazing pats. to me how you're still surprised after all this time. You know... Uh, hello, David. We've met. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, just once or twice. <sighs> Fuck you guys. Anyways, I guess that's the end of the show. Uh, went on a note that I believe we hit David all the high points or low points. Yeah. As it were. And uh, David takes a couple of hits in the eye. That would, that, that would mean guys. that there's a middle ground somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we found we found the low ground a couple of times here. That's for sure. Yeah, early in the show. This episode over, David. I, much- I have the high ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's over, David. <laughs> All right, everybody. This is Nerd Sports episode ninety-five. We got five more, and we'll make it to a hundred. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna do anything special, but I'm David Dickerman. I'm Johnny uh, Skelton, and I am Chris Jacka. And thank you all for watching, listening, and uh, checking out our stuff. Later. Later. Okay, bye.